Hey guys, what's up? It's Tennybox here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm wrapping, or wrapping, repping my uh, Scooby-Doo, uh, Where Are You t-shirt. Actually, just it just has Scooby-Doo on it. I lied. It's not Where Are You, but it's a Scooby-Doo shirt, and it's awesome. Today I'm going to be doing a retrospective review of Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which is honestly my favorite narratively told story in Scooby-Doo, and honestly probably my favorite series, other than for the sake of nostalgia, like of the older cartoons like Where Are You, What's New Scooby-Doo, New Scooby-Doo Movies, etc. All those older ones. I, I, it's like one of those things where quality-wise, like sure they're worse because they're older, but at the same time nostalgia-wise they're better. But with this, Mystery Incorporated has better quality and better, um, nost not nostalgia, uh, narrative writing. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, I will spoil a little bit of it later on in the review, but I just want to talk about it. I want to sell you guys this show before, um... I spoil it because I want you guys, if you've never watched it, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm trying to get at it and you should go watch it. If you want a Scooby-Doo show that has, like, Lovecraftian, like, interdimensional, early like, outer dimensional things of just horror, science fiction, mystery, with a plot that arcs from episode one to the, fi the final episode, which is, like, uh, two seasons of content, which, what are they, like, 40 episodes each or something, or 20? I don't remember. Uh, either way... It's a pretty good long series that we have. I wish it would have been season three, but there is a wrapped conclusion at the end of season two, and it does follow a big narrative arc with all the characters and pretty much everybody in the town of Crystal Cove. Um, going into spoiler territory now, I know I said do it later, but I'm going to keep this review kind of short because I wanted to just talk about the highlights. I don't want to go through and spoil everything because I know some of you guys are going to watch it just because uh, they might want to get spoiled on it, but... I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just going to get on to the spoiler stuff now. The spoiler stuff. The whole Lovecraftian entity thing with the giant mon tentacle monster, Cthulhu Beast, <laughs> manipulating everybody in Crystal Cove, this evil entity from episode one, has it has foreshadowing in the very first or second episode of the show. Like when... let's Let me talk about one that I specifically remember straight off the top of my head. Um, when they were going to uh, Gatorsburg in episode two, I believe it was... Uh, to to solve that mystery, um, they're going up into the hotel um, after their mystery machine breaks down to stay the night there. And the neon site sign uh, on the hotels is like hotel vacancy. Bl I don't remember what the sign says, but the letters start going out and it says the dog dies. And then you can easily write that off as like, oh, it's just trying to be creepy. And yes, it is. But then when you get to like the very end of the show. Scooby ends up being this life force thing for the entity, and he even repeat like repeatedly just says the dog dies, and it's like really creepy because you'll have like those little flashbacks to like episode two of the show, and it's like holy crap! I remember this like fifty episodes ago when they hinted at this. Like we thought this was just like a. I was just thinking, oh, this is just an episodic thing. Like it's not gonna really hold any weight for the future episodes, or if it does, it's gonna be very loose. There are legitimate foreshadowing moments in this that are downright just awesome, and that just build up into so much more. Uh, negatives of the show, I can definitely see why people wouldn't like the romance uh, aspect of it between Fred and Daphne and Velma and Scooby. <sighs> you know, it's wishy-washy for me, because growing up, I really never thought about these characters like being in like romantic relationships with each other, but when the show hit, it, it's subtle enough to not be annoying, but in some episodes, it does get a little annoying, because it's, like, over the top and not so subtle, but for most of it, it's just, like, bickering and stuff like that. It, it's whatever. It's honestly very overlookable, but if you want those relationships between the characters, that's definitely in the show, and you'll love it. I personally didn't mind it. I thought it was annoying a little bit at first. I was like, oh, they're doing this route, but then I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. This is definitely something I could see happening, and it honestly builds into something where I could be like, Oh, this this is the natural the natural progression of the relationship. To be completely honest, um, and honestly, I don't know, man. Like, let's talk about uh, cliffhangers from the end of season one. The cliffhanger at the end of season one is just awesome. Like, I originally thought that the show got canceled after season one, and I was like, no, don't end that cliffhanger. And it luckily didn't. It came back like a year later or so, a year and a half. It was a long time before the second season came back, and I was like. Man, this sucks. We're not going to get a season two. And we eventually did. But with this cliffhanger, when you find out that Fred's dad is actually the freak of Crystal Cove, who's been one of the people, you know, setting up all this stuff. 
and trying to get all the planospheric discs. Um, if you don't know what the planospheric discs are, I, like I said, watch the show. Uh, but basically, it's all these puzzle pieces that fit together to essentially... It's almost like a... I don't want to say treasure map, but it... it you just go watch the show. I'm going to be terrible at explaining it in this. But the planospheric disc pieces are very, very important to Coolsville. Or not Coolsville, excuse me, Crystal Cove. And they're basically what leads eventually to the end of the world, which actually does happen in this show. At the end of Season 2, in the very last few episodes, uh, Pericles, which is the evil parrot, it sounds very bizarre and like weird, but trust me, it works, man. Um, Fred's parents, his biological parents, because that's another secret of the show, the mayor, which is Fred's dad, supposedly, you find out at the end of Season 1 that he has just been, he was basically stolen as a baby, and the original Mystery Incorporated had Fred's original parents in it, and a few other people around town, which is another person in the show, Angel Dynamite. You'll find out about her while I'm watching the show. Um, but basically, you just find out that the mayor is this evil dude that kidnaps Fred. But going back into like season two, you really find out that Fred's uh, birth parents really aren't that great of people either. They basically sell out his son to serve this evil entity for whatever reason. I, I honestly was a little bit iffy on that. They wanted, I guess they wanted power. Um like immense power or whatever with Pericles and they were just or maybe immortality some kind of thing I don't know um but they basically sacrificed themselves they get eaten alive in the last episode of the show or the second to last and then the uh giant Lovecraftian Cthulhu beast I think it's just known as the evil one or something like that um the evil entity I think is what they call it and they it eats everybody in Crystal Cove except for our main mystery crew destroys the town this is like if you want to see, like, the entire town of Crystal Cove or slash, like, the Scooby-Doo gang get, like, just obliterated and just a ton of carnage and destruction and death from that show, this is definitely the show for you because it happens in the last episode. Um, but basically what happens is they end up using this Heart of the Jaguar thing, basically just narrative stuff, um, to destroy this evil entity and they just get blown into oblivion and then they wake up and they're in this alternate reality of Crystal Cove where this planospheric disc and this evil treasure and this evil entity doesn't exist and there's no reason for them to be manipulated by this evil entity. And it's really cool the way they did it because you have all these characters from season one and two that are just absolutely greedy, awful people that are willing to sacrifice their friends and family around them just for, you know, a piece of the planetspheric disc, or just immortality, basically. It doesn't really, I don't really remember, like, the exact, like, reason why the parents helped out. I think it was more of, like, just a power sort of thing that they were going after. But just going, like, it flashes back to, like, all these people that have done, like, the mysteries throughout season one and two, and all of them have basically been just manipulated by this evil entity over Crystal Cove, which is absolutely insane. It actually gives some merit to, like, rewatch the episodes to look for little Easter eggs and just, like, funny jokes. This also has a lot of adult humor, which I left my freaking butt off at a lot of the time. Like, there are some downright bad jokes in this movie, or in the show, that not bad as in, like, oh, that's dumb. Like, bad as in, like, no. Like, above PG-13 level, <coughs> like, really bad innuendo. Um, and it was hilarious, I'm gonna admit. Uh, go watch Mystery Incorporated. It's the best narrative Scooby-Doo show ever made, period. It's I don't know if it's my favorite show just because of nostalgia's sake and just our old art style is really awesome. I love the old ones. Um, but it's honestly pretty much tied as the best Scooby-Doo of all time. It's definitely better than, like, modern ones. It's certainly better than the last one I reviewed of uh, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. I'll, I'll still review those, but, um, you know, we're, Mystery Incorporated is awesome. Just go watch it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep calm and trust your instincts, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day, and peace out.